Hey everybody, Casmo here, and today we're going to talk about something, uh, I don't know, I think some of you guys maybe took me a little bit literal in a video I did back talking about don't hover so much, and really the keywords there is not so much, doesn't mean that you can't, it just means that there's a time and a place for it, so let's talk a little bit about that. Stig Reyes, town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. All right, so helicopters like to hover. That doesn't mean that they have to hover. And we're going to explore some situations where hovering is a good thing and hovering is not a good thing. Now, it doesn't take much to look uh, on TV these days and see some footage coming out of Ukraine and seeing helicopters get all shot up. Uh, sometimes they're hovering and sometimes they're flying around. Uh, that's because in a lot of cases, they're just using the wrong techniques at the wrong times. And I hate to say that, but it's true. Hovering is something you want to do when you kind of have an idea that there's nobody bad around. If you don't have a good idea about that, then you're going to want to keep some speed up. And of course, the terrain is going to play a part in that. So what we're going to do is head on down this road. At least I think it's this road. And I've got some guys set out here along the road. And I honestly don't remember where I put them. So uh, eventually we'll run into them. And what I want to do is keep my speed up because eventually someone is going to shoot at me. I don't know where they are. I don't know what kind of weapon systems they have. Well, I mean, I know they have rifles, but the point is, in this environment, I don't know what they have. They may have RPGs. They may have man pads, something like that. By keeping my speed up, it's going to allow me to react to that. It doesn't mean you're not going to get hit. It doesn't mean that sometimes guys get lucky. I mean, you may still get shot down, uh, but it's going to uh, lessen that opportunity for the guy to get that kill shot shoot you down right away of course you know i got it we're playing dcs and sometimes the uh, ai is incredible aim shooting at something that's going over 100 miles an hour but we're just going to continue on and then we'll react as best we can all right so we're taking fire there from the uh, tree line okay and we've taken a hit Notice I'm keeping my speed up. I've pulled in a little bit of torque. We're still taking hits. But we're not taking kill shots. We're keeping our speed up. We're not doing this dynamic, crazy pull the stick back as hard as you can maneuver. And I see a lot of guys like to do with helicopters because the problem when we do that is that we're going to pull all of that power, all that airspeed that we have. We're going to trade it in for basically nothing. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep our speed up. So you can see that I kept... Oh, around 100 knots, I wasn't paying attention, but around 100 knots throughout that entire engagement. I didn't pull back on the stick. I didn't yank back on the stick. And what we'll do, we're going to go back over towards that area. Try to re-identify where that was. I know we were on the main road. There's the main hardball road. All right, so we're just trying to re-identify where that shooting was. It was coming from roughly this tree line here. That's okay. All right, so obviously real world, we wouldn't just pull right back into it, let them shoot at us again. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna do what I see a lot of you guys do when you start taking fire. All right, so we're taking fire. All right, so I'm gonna pull back hard because I think I'm flying a jet. Watch that airspeed. Look at that airspeed. Okay, because I'm pulling back hard. I'm not even really pulling back that hard because my body just won't let me, but Pulling back hard, that guy's just been pinging me the entire time. All right? And if I pulled back really hard, I'd end up at a hover, and this guy would just be eating my lunch. All right? So we're still taking fire. Things are a little bit funky. We're going to get our airspeed back up. We're going to pull away. Uh-oh. All right, but you see that we don't know necessarily where the bad guys are. We didn't get a really good brief. We just know that there's bad guys out here. Uh, they're along this this route and of course we could we could go back and kind of dissect the tactics of this whole mission you know would we really do it this way and the answer is no but i'm just trying to make a point when it comes to maneuvering speed and uh when to hover you see there's absolutely times where we want to keep that speed up you know fighter guys always talk about speed is life well that that's true for helicopters too it, it can be life and sometimes hovering can be life uh, we've sort of isolated where this guy is he's in this tree line of course we would want to pull back, uh, get our sensors on that area, and uh, prosecute the target. 
with whatever uh, weapon system is best. All right, so let's take a look at a different situation where hovering is the right answer. All right, everybody, we're back on the airfield and we're going to take a look at the F-10 map just to get an idea of what we're talking about here. So in this situation, we know, and I've not drawn it on the map or anything, but right about in here, we know that this is a templated enemy position, okay, somewhere in this area. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you that just because somebody draws a red uh, circle or square or whatever on a map, it doesn't necessarily mean that a bad guy is directly there, but it gives us an idea of this is the enemy location. So now we're talking a little bit more sort of high intensity um, threat analysis where you've got intel that's driving things. You know, less likely to just have randos kind of running around with rifles and RPGs, but more along the points of you're going to have tanks and BMPs and surface air missile systems and all that stuff. And those things are kind of hard to hide, particularly in a modern environment. So you're going to kind of know where these dudes are at. And this is the time where hovering might be the right call. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll, we'll speed up in time, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving down in that direction and I'm going to use this terrain and I'm going to move slowly and try to identify this target. All right, so before we get too far down the road here, essentially what we've done is established that we have a good idea of where bad guys are and we've got them templated down at waypoint two. So what I want to do is build myself some situational awareness. So I have some idea of what I'm getting myself into. So I'm going to set uh, myself direct waypoint to move my cursor over there because it's easy and I don't want to use the keyboard because I'm lazy. And we've set waypoint two as our uh, direct waypoint. We can see that it's off in the distance. We see that we're nine K's out. So already I know that I'm getting into range where my sensors are going to be able to help me out. But I also know that there's man pads and there's SAMs in the area. So I don't want to, I don't want to get up real high. I want to chart find areas where I can safely observe. I don't want to pull up into this area because I just don't like to hover over buildings. I don't know who lives there. Uh, you know, bad things can happen. So I want to try to find some terrain that's going to allow me to kind of perch myself into an area where I can maybe get some eyes on. So you notice I'm not flying directly to the waypoint. I'm flying away from it. I'm kind of keeping it oblique. I don't want to close this range because I want to get to a position where I can actually see. I've got some more buildings up here. So basically, I'm just going to kind of cruise around a little bit and try to find the right spot. I don't want to get uh, too close. I don't want I, I want to stay, let's say, about five kilometers away. That's that's the line I'm drawing for myself uh, so I can do some observations. We're kind of out here in the open, but, you know, that's the other thing is I can see if there's anyone else out here. Right now, the only thing I really am worried about is the idea that maybe there is some rando out here with a rifle or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to continue to find a good spot and then uh, allow my front seater to get the sensors onto that area. Or what I could do is unmask in flight. So essentially, I keep my airspeed up, uh, front seater gets ready, and then what I do is I climb the aircraft just a little bit, let him get sensors on to that target area, look around and I dive back down, okay? So if you think back to the old uh, uh, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down type technique, the three to five second buddy rush, kind of the same concept is I, I pop up, I look around for a few seconds, and then I pop back down. So let's uh, let's see if we can't hide over here behind these trees and it will allow our front seater to take a look. All right, so since we're here, let's talk a little bit about unmasking. And uh, there's a little bit of a process to it. I don't, I'm, you know, I'm playing by myself right now. I don't have any friends. So uh, I'm going to do this all by myself and uh, kind of talk through the motion. So the front seater, essentially at this point, what he's doing is he's getting ready. Okay. So he's got uh, his acquisition source set up to, uh, to that waypoint where we want to look. He's making sure that we're sort of pointed in the right direction and that he's ready to go because we want to make this uh, go quickly. We don't want to expose ourselves for too long. And once he's set up, then he's going to let us know. And he's going to be looking outside with the sensor, pulling a little bit of torque. I'm just kind of watching the uh, TGT. It's no big deal. And, uh, and then we're going to just bring the aircraft up. Again, we're unmasking ourselves. And essentially, when the front seater can actually start seeing what he's looking for, 
he's going to tell us the mark altitude. So if he said mark altitude right here, then 80 feet. That means what I'm going to try to do is maintain 80 feet, try to maintain this hover. I'm going to jump into the front seat and then we'll take a look from there. All right, so we're in the front seat. I've removed the HDU just so I can see a little bit better. And uh, just to kind of talk back through some of the things that the front seater should have been doing before we unmask, but again, I'm just kind of doing this by myself, is get set up or looking at the right spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to uh, coordinates page, my uh, waypoints. We're gonna set that as our acquisition source. And then we're gonna uh, slave to that acquisition source. Now we've slaved, uh, deslaved, so I can start moving stuff around. And I'm just gonna look in this area and see if I can actually find what we're looking for. And I think we might have, yep, there we go. All right, so there is the enemy that was at that templated location. And I'm gonna go ahead and arm the aircraft just so I can get a good laser range. All right, so he's 4Ks out. And I know that there was some templated buddies out there and uh, I'm not seeing them. And they're cold right now, which is a great addition to DCS, I think. Uh, but they're cold right now, so we can't necessarily pop over to Fleer and take a look. But already you can see that we've found the guy. And at this point, honestly, what I've done or what I should have done is is lays and store, right? So we've stored this as target one. And then we're going to pop back down. So we don't want to stay up here for a really long time exposing ourselves way up in the air. I mean, we're only 80 feet, so we're not too bad. Uh, but we're going to pop up, lays and store. We can share that information with other aircraft. We can now move to another location and very quickly reacquire target one, right? So we can go back up to our coordinates page, go to cord target. And now that is my acquisition source target one. You can see there. Now I can very quickly slew back to that. So now we can reposition to another location because we don't want to stay here. This is the problem that a lot of guys, myself included, uh, we get stuck into this idea that, I'm, that, well, this is my position. Well, it doesn't have to be my position. Um, I don't want to engage this guy because I know there's more, but I don't know where they are. So what I want to do is start moving around, finding other locations, maintaining the standoff, trying to identify these locations, mark them, save them as targets, pass that on to my buddies, and then we can make a coordinated strike. We can all pop up, engage different targets, right? I can call this, hey, this is target one at grid, blah, blah, blah. And then we find the other guy and say, hey, okay, he's target two at target uh, grid, blah, blah, blah. You guys get number two, we'll get number one. Okay, let's get ready to shoot, right? You can coordinate all these things, but it takes a little bit of time. And I don't think that the average DCS player really kind of understands the amount of time that goes into an engagement, whether it's a jet, it's a helicopter. I've watched these engagements take a really long time in real life. Uh, so take your time. And uh, if you go through the steps, it can be somewhat enjoyable. So we don't know where these other guys are and I don't really feel like looking for them. So. Let's just shoot this guy. So we're going to go ahead and was our missile. There it is. We're lasing. Primary, primary channel track. Missile launch. Time of flight. 16 seconds. And maybe we'll invoke a response. This is another way of looking at it. Because if I shoot this guy, or his buddy is going to start maneuvering. And that might help us find them as well. There we go. Impact. And I'm going to start scanning. Not seeing any movement, but that's okay. Anyway, well, that's another way to mark the target area because now we've got a nice plume of smoke out there and our wingman, or maybe we've got some casts overhead and now more easily narrow in on the target area. Hey, do you see the uh, black smoke from the engagement? Yes, I do. Okay, that's your target area. You're clear to engage. And it's just that easy. So as you can see, there is certainly a time where hovering is okay. And then there's a time where you want to keep that speed up to help yourself survive. Hope this was helpful. We'll talk to you guys later.